Hey, fellow traveler, welcome to the Third Eye Awakening podcast, a show where we talk all about spiritual and psychic awakening, magic, the shift from 3D to 5D, star seeds, ascension, multiple timelines, multiple dimensions, the universe, the multiverse, the Akashic records, all the good things. I am your host, Amy Belair, and I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Okay, let's do this. Hi guys. Okay. I have such a good episode for you today. Today we have my friend Colleen who is uh, returning to the show. I actually got a lot of messages about my first conversation with Colleen, especially when we went into our theories about the moon. A lot of people have been very interested in that. Um, And so I feel like you guys all love her as much as I do probably and you're probably gonna love the conversation that we have today we talk about um false matrix conscious creatorship the heart portal among other things and then I just have to say that at the end of the episode I kind of tease like oh we're gonna go you know we're gonna stop the main show now we're gonna go ahead and talk about whatever it was I can't even remember I think it was like galactics and the energetic cymatic expression of galactics as Colleen perceives them I was like we're gonna go talk about that on the secret bonus show for the patreon members but that conversation ended up being so much more it was really really good I literally had to peel myself away from it only because I had to go pick up my kids from school and couldn't, you know, be that parent that (laughs) left them wondering if anyone was ever coming. Uh, But as I recall, we talked about, we talked about galactics and their energetic cymatic expression. So Colleen told me her theory about that. And then that triggered in me to share with her a theory that I've recently been playing with and practicing within myself that interdimensional travel is actually like just shifting through these like Russian nesting doll layers of our own energy field and that it's all done through the heart and we kind of go down that rabbit hole. We talk about hilarious symbolic poop dreams (laughs) Um, and we talk about the time matrix and the way that the time matrix is changing. It was just a really, really expansive conversation, even for me. So because Colleen is my friend, she started out, I think she came to me through the tinfoil hat episode, as many, many of you did. God bless Sam Tripoli. And uh, then she joined Soul Space and she joined a couple of my different programs and we ended up working together in a mentorship capacity and we just, we just talk to each other probably like once, once every 10 days or so at least have amazing conversations. And I was like, Colleen, people need to hear these conversations. They just need to hear from you. So I don't even have a bio because I just invited her to come, you know, have a recorded conversation with me, but I'll give you my bio. So Colleen is a wife and a mother, um, and she reads the Akashic Records, and she also has a unique gift where she can understand and translate information about our galactic aspects, but she does it completely through her own unique lens. Like, she does not, you know, none of it is based on anybody else's presentation of what star seeds are, the different, she is just, like, totally you know, like raw and unfiltered, just picking up what she picks up from any given person. So I believe that right now, the way that she works is she does kind of like mini Akashic mentorships. And I feel like if you're called to work with Colleen, definitely um, reach out to her. I don't even know what her offerings are because she doesn't have a website. She's just one of those enigmatic unicorns that the, the universe just brings her the people that, you know, she is meant to work with. It's amazing. Uh, but the the thing that I love so much about Colleen is her mind goes to all the most fascinating places. She does not hold herself back. She doesn't care if it sounds like crazy or whatever. She's just like here for expanding into deeper levels of the truth. And she also has this knack for kind of like dropping bombs on 
I'm sure it's other people too, but I can only speak for myself, but dropping bombs on me of that, like destabilize my current framework of understanding reality. And it's not that I agree with everything Colleen says, but I deeply consider everything she says. And most of the things I end up agreeing with and a couple of the things I'm just like, "Mm, that doesn't actually resonate with me. But the amazing thing is that she's brought me like, I I want somebody to shake up my, my, reality framework you know so anyway I don't want to ramble too long before we just get into the episode but I also have a couple other very important things to say so the first thing is did you know that there is a way that you can enter a monthly draw to win a 45 minute free Akashic Records reading with me to be shared on the podcast You probably didn't know that because I am the worst at advertising these things and all things pretty much. I'm a terrible marketer, (laughs) truly terrible. So yeah, you can enter this draw by just going on over to Apple Podcasts, even if you listen on Spotify or Breaker or Stitcher or Pocket Casts or any other place. Unfortunately, the only way that this... um, it can only work through rating this podcast on Apple Podcasts, okay? So go over to Apple Podcasts and leave a genuine rating and review, meaning you don't, I'm not, I do not read people's and I'm like, oh, this is the the kindest review, so I'm going to pick somebody this way. But what I do is I put everybody's name in a draw and I use a randomizer and we pull names. Um, But there are a couple of tricky, finicky instructions, so please pay attention to what I'm saying. Number one, you must screenshot your review before you submit it so that I know it was your review and that you didn't just screenshot and steal someone else's. Because, and, and like, that's not a good way to do it anyway, because, you know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, and then also the n- number two finicky instruction is please, please, please just send it to me via email to amy at the northstarguidance.com because I didn't specify this the first time I advertised this on the podcast and I went to like randomly pick a couple names the other day and both of them happened to be on Instagram and we could not track them down because they've since changed their Instagram handle so I have no idea how to get a hold of those people and that really bumps me out so we've learned the hard way that it is way easier to keep this stuff organized through email if you submitted your screenshotted review on Instagram in the past and you want to make sure you're still included in the monthly draw, then please just go back to, you know, the the DM that you started with me, grab the picture of your screenshotted review and email it to me and then we'll secure your name back in the draw. So um, doing this really helps me to grow the podcast but it also gives me the opportunity to sit with a bunch of you and meet you and you know do an exploration of your Akashic field which I absolutely love I'm doing one of these per month and so the odds are pretty good they're pretty highly in your favor that if you submit a screenshot um you will this is pretty good odds that your name might get chosen Also, I want to extend the invitation um, to email me and ask me questions. Actually, it really helps me to create content that is valuable for you guys. Um, Because sometimes I get a little bit insecure and I'm like, like, am I just talking about the shit that I want to talk about and nobody cares? I don't think so because I get a lot of really nice messages from all of you. But I would love to be of service to you all. And create things that are really helpful to you. So please feel free to ask me questions. Email is the best way to reach out at this point because I will always see the emails and then we get them labeled and sorted into different folders and they won't get lost. They're always there that I can go back and find them. Okay, finally, the last thing that I want to tell you about is that my new what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it an incubator. My It's a program, but it's like a 12-month incubator uh, about false matrix emancipation and conscious creator activation. 
is officially open for enrollment and we are celebrating this by doing a 72 hour flash sale starting on January 20th, which is a Friday, going through the weekend uh, until midnight Eastern time on Sunday, January 22nd, where you can get it for 30% off, which is so good. It's such a steal. There's so much in this program, this incubator experience. I am so excited about it. Like ridiculously, absurdly excited. So next week, I'm going to do a solo episode where I'm going to talk in greater detail about my reasoning behind the creation of this program. But because we're doing the sale now, I just want to give you a little bit of information and let you know what it's all about. This is so that you can extricate yourself from the bullshit of the false matrix and the way that our creatorship has been hijacked by those jagweeds, um, the, you know, the archontic elites, whatever, whatever we want to call them. Uh, and we can reclaim the creator power that we actually have because it is phenomenal. And this is a 12 month experience, although I've made it extremely affordable to join extremely, extremely affordable because it is a lot of work to go through like all of the ways that we are wired into the false matrix and clear those out and activate our actual abilities. But it is time now, you guys, I feel it in my energy field. This is the new mission that I've been given and I could not possibly be more excited about anything. So I'm going to give you a little breakdown of the the year and the way it's going to go and the things that we're going to learn. Um, but I'm going to try and speed through it. So I know that it's going to be a lot to hear and you're going to be like, wait, what? You're going too fast. But just check out the, the link in the show notes. It'll have that information there. All right. In January, we're starting with the root chakra, clearing and activation. We're doing the zero point field and the first dimension of consciousness, as well as the first strand of DNA. We are detoxing and purifying. We are dissolving manifestations in old timelines, and we are going into the money slavery wound. February, we're going into sacral clearing and activation, sacral chakra clearing and activation, the second dimension, the second strand of DNA, creation and manifestation and relationship. In March, we're going into solar plexus chakra clearing and activation, third dimension, third strand of DNA, human ego, the guardians of free will, money, and love. In April, we're going into heart chakra clearing and activation, fourth dimensional bridge, fourth strand of DNA, heart portal opening, next level empath work, heart telepathy, and manifestation. From the heart. In May, we're going into throat chakra clearing and activation, fifth dimension, fifth strand of DNA, and manifestation through the throat and matrix alteration through the throat. In June, we're going into third eye clearing and activation, the sixth dimension, the sixth strand of DNA, telepathy, visioning, manifestation through the third eye, and timeline creation. In July, we're going into crown chakra clearing and activation, seventh dimension, the seventh strand of DNA, channeling and oracling and timeline creation. In August, we're doing earth star and soul star clearing and activation, eighth dimension, eighth strand of DNA, holographic timeline encoding. September is the flora fauna mycelial matrix chakra and stellar gateway chakra clearing and activation the ninth dimension, the ninth strand of DNA, planetary grid work, planetary guardianship. October is the mineral crystal and water matrix chakra and the galactic gateway chakra clearing and activation, the 10th dimension, 10th strand of DNA, elemental spirits, interdimensionals and galactics, the Nephilim, the angelics and dragons, Satan, Lucifer, Antichrist and demonics, discernment and defense against the dark arts. In November, we are doing the Inner Earth Paradise Chakra and the Crystal Star Chakra Clearing and Activation, the 11th Dimension, the 11th Strand of DNA, 
Christ, Sophia, and Eden, and collective timeline creation. And in December of 2023, we are doing the Golden Heart of the Mother and the Holographic Central Sun clearing and activation, the 12th dimension, 12th strand of DNA, the Trinity Code complete, the Heart Star activation, and Heart Telepathy activation. Just reading through this, even though I wrote it myself, I am so thrilled. I'm so excited. I freaking cannot wait to do this with all of you who feel called to join me. And honestly, when I think about this whole year of 2023, I think about who we are going to be on the other side of it and what we will have accomplished as we move through the curriculum of this incubator experience as we move through these themes and these energies, I just feel like I, I'm, I don't know. I think I've never been more excited for a year in my life than I am for 2023. So if you feel called to join into this process and reclaim your vision, manifest the things that you want for your own self and your, you know, your family, your loved ones, whoever you're in relationship with and consciously create your own life and get into things like timeline creation and um, collective timeline creation and holographic timeline encoding and planetary grid work and guardianship and all that stuff then there's never going to be a better time to join than there is this weekend, January 20th to 22nd, where you can get 30% off of the enrollment price. So I know a bunch of you are going to join. I feel you in my field. We're freaking ready for this. I can't wait and I will see you there. Otherwise, without any further ramblings on my part, Let's just get into this awesome episode with the brilliant Colleen Turner. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. I'm so super excited and honored. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you because we talk probably, I would say we check in with each other probably like every other week at least. And then we go off on these like insane conversations that sometimes take up a whole day in the background or span over a couple days. And we like check in with each other about the energies we're feeling. And it's always just very interesting to hear from you. Let's talk about it's still January at the time of recording this. And I'm sure it's going to be January when it is released. So let's talk about what you're feeling, compare notes about what we're both feeling in the coming energies, not necessarily for the entire year, but just what we can feel on the horizon. Okay, so what we're talking about, just the fact that it feels like, I think a lot of people are saying this, though, it feels like the world stage is going to get very chaotic. Even like this morning, as we're recording, this morning was the day that like all the airlines canceled all their flights. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. In the U.S., that all the airlines canceled their flights. This morning, there was like some, I don't know, it was all over Instagram. But someone's like missing their flights. It's like chaotic. They're like, what's going on? And then people saw different, the, the solar flares are going on right now too. And solar flares are so fascinating because it's like, what are they? Like everyone has a different perception of what they are. And I, anyway, so there's just a lot of chaos, but then it feels like behind the scenes with a lot of people who spent 2022, like working through their shit. I call them like now levels. Like we are now entered a new level. Like we levels up. It's 2023. We're playing a different game. And so it's right now, like all the people who've done their 20, played 2022 and all the energies and like really worked through their stuff. I think there's a lot of shadow work, a lot of clearing out, a lot of cleansing. We're just along for the ride, having a great time. Like really starting to like really work on our personal universes and become like these sovereign beings and be able to see what's happening outside of us and not let it affect like our personal universes because we realize like we are so much bigger than the world stage that they put before us. Yeah, I feel really similar things where it was like some months ago when I was first starting to feel into 2023, I was like, oh, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a rough ride in terms of a lot of really polarizing events on the world stage. But now that we're here and it feels so good, we were talking about how three of us all pulled the 10 of cups as being a card for, I pulled it as like the flavor of the year, but it feels really good and it feels really beautiful. And I'm remembering like 
it's not bad. All these polarizing things, all the drama on the world stage is just a contractionary squeeze to squeeze more people awake. And so if you're already awake to some degree, to the degree which you are awake, it's actually just going to feel like another day ending in Y. It's just, oh, this is just, there's just chaos in the world stage. This is what it is. And this is all like a crazy holographic dream projection. And we're figuring out how to maneuver within it. And I likewise feel that, yeah, when we're, when we've entered this new level, it, for me, it feels like what we're moving into is conscious creatorship. And I know you and I had talked about that, I don't know, probably back in the summer of this feeling of there's supposed to be more like creator beings here by now. And a little bit of that sense of like, where is everybody? Where are all the conscious creators? But I personally feel like a lot of us are coming on board and like being ready to occupy that space and steward that responsibility now. So interesting because I remember when we talked about that back then and I still like my perception of it and like when I feel into it, I still think there were supposed to be more of us. And I think that's like the transition that happened around that August, September, October mark. Something happened in November. I feel like there's a big shift in November. But anyways, that was when like a lot of us were like, oh, crap, there were supposed to be more of us. And since there weren't more of us, a lot of us had to step up like more than we were originally, I guess I'll say contracted to. And then we had to get, it feels like a lot of the creator being who did decide to step up got even more of themselves. And that's what that big, we even described it like as a walk-in experience. But it was like just the players who are here to create and change the projection of this reality. Like since we didn't have all of our teammates that we thought we were going to have that we came incarnated with, I truly think that like we were like, okay, we got to do with what we have because they are still in the trance. They're not going to come out of their trance. It's just at that moment, we thought they were going to come out. But I think that the whoever we're up against, I'll say... <laughs> They pulled out all the stops last year. I honestly think last year was like, a, it, I, there was this funny meme going around that if you didn't die, like at least six times last year, and like you weren't, didn't die and you weren't reborn, then I can't be your friend because it just felt like last year was just like dying and being like, oh my God, what is this? And then like, it was another, and it was just clearing out all those stuff. And we had to clear out so much because I think we had to bring in so much more of that creator energy into a lot of us who were already activated. And I think that it was really tough. Like I, like me personally, after we did our first podcast, like September, October were rough for me. It felt like I felt like everything was just like coming at me like nonstop and that I was like, how am I going to get through this game? And then I also, for the listeners, I refer to this as a game. <laughs> it's the only thing that makes sense <laughs> to me. But, and then like for... Yeah. So like for now, it's even interesting because as like the stuff I was talking about this morning, all the stuff on Instagram that was being posted, you come to this realization that or this is realization I came to is like there is no true like we're never going to get the answer. We think that there's going to be this big disclosure moment. We think that there's going to be but the truth of it is they've caused so much chaos in all the different worlds, conspiracy, spiritual, new age, like mainstream media. So it's like there are so many different things that like this things could be. But then you come to this like feeling of and this is where I am, like this relaxed feeling of I am never going to know what's going on. I, I'm OK with that. Like I just have to follow like my yeses. I have to follow like what my heart is leading me to do because like I could I know I'm not going to find any of the answers on the internet. Totally, totally. And it's a bit of a I don't think I'm relaxed into it yet. I'm still a little frustrated about it, a little prickly like. This feeling of, I don't know, it's not like I think that there is, on some level, there is an absolute truth, like, at the God level, right? Like, the totality of everything that is. But, so, it's not like I'm, like, thinking that there is, there's a truth and, damn it, I have the right to know it. But there's, I am uncovering, personally, like, November was super rough for me because I'm uncovering layers of deception that I didn't previously see where I'm like, what is the truth behind this? It's very frustrating. It's a very frustrating place to be. But I think that ultimately that's it is like having to just relax 
really. And be like, I'm not going to find it. And to try to look for it is a waste of my creative energy to an extent. I feel like when you're, when you uncover that new layer of whatever it is, because I think that's part of the journey for most of us who would listen to a podcast like this, you, there's this little period where you're literally on, like, you can feel that somebody is leading you on a trail, whether it's, I don't know, your higher self or it's like God or your guides or whatever, however you want to perceive it. But like you're being led along a trail to get, to collect like gold coins of information. And then there's this point where the trail just drops off. But now, and this happens to me all the time, but I'm in the habit of it. And I can tell there's no more gold coins to come. But in vain, I keep trying to listen to more YouTube videos or podcasts or whatever. But that's actually the point where the, I have to assimilate and integrate the new truth inside of myself that there is no, there's no more activation coins outside of me for the time being on this particular topic. Oh, I could not agree more with that. Because you do, you get to this like place where you're at. You also get to that place where you reframe. And I'm at this place. Not it's not that like deep, but you realize like this is a holographic universe. And so with any type of holographic universe, like it is essentially coding and like it is energy. And then you realize that what can you do with coding energy? You can change the coding or you can manipulate the energy. So it's like you actually have the ability to change like the reality that you're living in. And then when you actually start to see that happen in your real life, you start to realize, oh my gosh, what is even real? And you start to really like start to wrap your head around the fact that you can have anything can be real in this world. Like for you, you can make like you can follow someone else's. But so the moment that you start like following those coins and like starting to watch all those YouTube videos and you start to create like those people who are putting saying the things that are real. And if you take that on as truth for you, then you're just projecting out their reality. Or do you even want that to be real? Is that even actually something that you resonate with or that you want to actually exist in this world? I always use the example of chickens for this. I, for the longest time, like want to get chickens and stuff. And then I, you know, have my own eggs and I'm really into like a lot of us, we're really into the health journey. And then all of a sudden the other day, it's because like I watch things on YouTube and Instagram and they're all talking about like their chickens and having these fresh eggs. But then when it, and so I felt like I wanted that to be true for me. But then when I actually tap into it, I'm like, I don't have chickens. Like four kids, I have dogs. Like I don't want to take care of these chickens. Like I was projecting forward this reality and trying to want something that wasn't, that was off of the scarcity model because mm-hmm. there's no eggs in the stores. But like, I have a bunch of neighbors who all have chickens. So I'm like, I can just buy eggs from my neighbors. And then I was going off of the whole model that it's like, they, people who post their pictures of the chickens on Instagram, it looks so cute. But then again, I have neighbors who have chickens and it's really messy. And I just, so it's this whole thing where you really have to decide like what, and that's why I think Instagram does a really good job of putting stuff in front of us to make us think we want things that we don't want. And it's really like, this year, especially, it's the time to like really feel into, do I want this because someone else has it and they're making it look really cool or like it's something that's right for them? Or do I want this because I actually want this? Or am I trying to push forward their narrative, their like, their project, projected reality thing that? Yeah, I feel like that's really the nuance, but the important difference, at least in my mind, this is how I understand it, but between manifestation and like being a conscious creator or I don't really know what other term to use in place of conscious creator but just being a creator being essentially is we can manifest all that stuff but it's like this piecemeal like you're manifesting one at a time you're manifesting things based on not fully understanding the process and how it works so exactly like Instagram essentially is like your gigantic, moving, flowing, dynamic, algorithm-based vision board. Know that. Understand that, everyone. It works exactly the same as a vision board, except that there's an element of randomness to it because it's moving and it's changing. The algorithm is feeding things to you. But 
your reticular activating system perceives it and factors it in as a reality to your subconscious brain, which then projects it out onto the green screen of this hologram for you to render. That's how manifestation works. Actually, not even complicated at all. And that's why we manifest the things that we're not really emotionally hooked into with a lot of ease because we don't have any stories around it. But Instagram in particular, I think all forms of social media, but Instagram in particular is like a flowing dynamic vision board. And if you have a bunch of shit on your Instagram, which I do, so I'm not judging anybody. It's just I'm aware of it right now. But like I'm following a bunch of people that like I don't even I literally don't ever want to see your content, not because I don't like them, but I just don't get anything out of it. And we have to accept that whatever we're looking at is influencing what we think is possible for us. And so that's more of a manifestation vibe. Whereas the creatorship that I think we're moving into is exactly like you said, realizing that this is a hologram, even though like I perceive it as being that there is a, an organic, I call it an organic simulation. And that's just for lack of better terms. So what I mean by that is I think that the organic simulation is not like a, a machine or AI propagated simulation, but more, it doesn't, how do I put it? It doesn't exist independently. I think not, I wouldn't say that humans in particular have to be here to engage with it for it to exist, but it goes back to that old Zen cone, the tree falls in a forest. Does anyone hear it? I think that the answer is no, and the tree doesn't fall in the forest because if nobody is there to observe it, the tree doesn't exist. And so it doesn't fall. Like that part of the forest isn't rendered, not there, it's just code. So it needs an experiencer in order to interact with it for it to render. And that's what I think the organic simulation is. And then there's this false matrix simulation, these Instagram projections, and all this weird layer of nonsense that is being fed more loudly into our, our psyches to confuse and confound our ability to understand how this whole thing works. But if we know that, or if we perceive it as a hologram, and we understand how this rendering process works, then what do we actually want to create? What do we want to create? Just like you're saying, like, it doesn't have to be chickens. I was saying yesterday, I was like sending somebody a long ass rambly vox about this. And I was saying, it's like we hear a lot, totally to your point, about how to deal with the coming times and whatever and getting out of the false matrix. Like you, you have to go off grid. You have to go off grid. You have to go off grid. I don't want to go off grid. First of all, I work on the internet. Second of all, I also have small kids. And I just, I don't desire for that level of roughing it. I completely think that there are people for whom it is their dharma and they should do it. For me, it doesn't feel genuine at this time. But I was thinking too, what if you love living in the city and you love the city lifestyle? And not only do you not want to go off grid, but you don't even want to move to the country. Does that mean that you're just doomed to always create within the false matrix mainframe, like as a prisoner to that system? No, fuck that. It's just about harnessing our own, like you said, our own universes. I've been calling it our own reality streams and stewarding it from a place of being able to recognize the ways that we're being influenced and being able to access inspiration outside of the influence that's being purposefully fed to us. Oh, yeah. And it's like interesting that you say that part about some people want to live in the city or some people want to have the home or some people want to have the neighborhood. Some people want to have it's also remembering that we are all here at this moment, in this time, in this game, like in this reality, this universe. So it, we got to come here at such an eclectic time where you got to have so many different experiences in the, in the one game where it feels like it maybe didn't used to have this much like diversity and this much like de de this many different ways to play out your human experience. Because it's like some people do, like you said, some people live like that city life or some people live like the homestead, like off-grid life. And 
they could have both those experience in this place. And you just have to honor the fact that once we all start to step into our creatorship, like we have to honor like what people choose, no matter what, you have to honor what people choose, what like they want their path to be. And I think that it's really important for us to realize that um, you can be in the city or you can be in the school system. You can do all those things, but you can also be when you once you become aware of what's going on. That is a huge way to detach yourself from, I'll say, air quotes matrix. Like once you are aware of what's going on and not like just mindlessly going through it, but like actually enjoying it and actually like being like, this is what I want to do. Because a lot of people took, I'm personally one of the ones I like homeschool and I had to like really go back to my homeschooling because I'm afraid of the school system and what they're going to do to my kids or homeschooling because this is something that I want for my family. And once I actually like, step back and thought of it that way I was like oh I'm homeschooling because this is something like I never wanted to send my kids to school in the first place and now like I finally stopped like working through that program mind and stuff but I also then became aware that like my kids are on their own journeys and I need to honor what they want to do because I'm not going to live in fear of the school system so like we have open conversations with our kids about hey do you want to go to school next year do you want to because I no longer am afraid that like they're going to you take away that whole fear tactic of like you were saying, like being in the city that you're not going to ascend, you know, that you're not going to ascend unless like you're out in the country, like living off grid. Like, I don't want to do that. Exactly. Exactly. As you said. So it is. It's just becoming like really aware that we at this current time, it's my belief that we are in their game. So it's like there's no way to not be giving our energy to their game because we actually are existing inside of it. So it's once you become aware of the fact that we are existing inside of their game, everything that we do, we're feeding their matrix. We're feeding their projected reality. So even just becoming aware of that, I honestly think takes away, starts to dissolve the illusion of their reality and lets us get to decide what we want to take from their reality, like what we want to take from their matrix and move forward. But I 100% think we're in like a huge, huge shift of projection. And I think that it's like the hundredth monkey experiment. It's like, we're just waiting for more and more energies to get on board. And that like, we're going to shift the projection. And that one thing that everyone needs to realize is as the projection shifts, energies can play out in a bunch of different ways. Like my, Amy and I could be like both like projecting from our heart space, from our creator beings, but we're going to be projecting completely different realities. Like those energies are going to play out completely different. Like my life is going to look way different than Amy's life, but we're still using our creator energy and like feeling into our heart and creating our like our realities. Yeah, totally. And we were talking before we hit record about how there, the idea we're moving even beyond the idea that Everybody has to get on the same page in order for us to create something new and better because that is not ever going to happen because the bigger, the bigger thing that we collectively create together is always going to play out through the individual reality streams. The bigger universal collective reality stream is a tapestry woven of our individual reality streams. But all the life force energy is in the individual streams. So waiting for, it would be impossible, even though you and I have a lot in common, like demographically, we have a lot in common. But like you said, we're still going to have totally different reality streams and what we, different projections, different ways that we play out the new things that we are consciously choosing and creating. Um, and so even though we're so similar, there's no way that you and I could get on the exact same page. It's a, it is totally a fruitless, it's like a waste of our time and a waste of our energy to be trying to get other people to agree with us anymore. It's just not going to happen and not in a defeated way, but it's just not a necessary component. Like it's a, to me, it feels like a relief. Oh, we get to let go of this. And just focus on creating our own individual projections. But I want you to, I would love to have you go back a little bit and talk more about what you said in terms of we are in their game. So there's no way that 
we can not feed their game. I would just love you to expand on that because I know what you mean because we talk frequently, <laughs> but I don't know. We just lipped over that. And that's a really big concept, I think. So I'd love to expand on it a bit. So I'll say my perception. My perception is this is essentially like a big metaverse. And so one of the reasons why like our realities are never going to link up with each other's realities is because I think that there's, I personally feel like there's stuff that exists outside of here. I think that we are all galactics or we have different energies and we come from different like source points, different drip downs, and we come into these human avatars. And once we come into these human avatars with our different energies, we are essentially in the metaverse. And that's why like, we're all so different. And like we, why we will never all want the same thing because the people who want the cities likely are used to playing in a world where there's cities and there's futuristic stuff. Like the people who want the homestead are likely come from like a universe that like is a very like slow moving. And there's people who come from like tropical areas who want tropical areas. There's people who want to live in the north. It's very much, I think that there's so much more to what we choose to play in this game. But one thing that's really cool about this game is that we all get to exist in it together because I think outside of here, we don't exist together. Like I I truly think that there's people who I will meet in a human form here that I won't be able to meet outside the game because I don't know if our two universes can link up outside the game. So when I say that we are in their game, I don't believe that was the original blueprint. I don't believe the original blueprint of this place was for us to be in their game. I think that's what has unfolded over time. I think that it, I truly believe that, and maybe, and I said this, Amy, I'm totally okay with this being like part of like my programming to make it like for me to move forward. But I do think that in a way, this world has been like hijacked and, um, we are trying to get it back to its original blueprint. And I think the original bl blueprint of this place was to come in and get to be a human. So the goal is to never not be human. We're not here to be our galactic selves. Yes, we, become, we can become aware of them. We can embrace different parts of ourselves and colors and like all the things that we're drawn to, likely that, that, that doesn't make sense. But it, the goal is to be human here. And so at some point, this human experience, I truly think, got hijacked. And so since it got hijacked, like I always see it as, and I know some people call it the firmament, but I do see it as like we are in a glass dome being watched. And so anytime you're in a glass dome and being watched, it makes me feel like we are likely inside someone else's world. It just makes what I like truly feel like in my heart of hearts is that like we are inside their game, that our game is probably like way bigger, way more expansive. Though. But right now we're in a very small portion of the game and it's a hijacked portion of the game. And so whatever we do, we're playing their game and the only way it's like shifting. And so we're like a lot of the creator beings who came in to how to change the game because a lot of the creative beings who came in to remember how to ship the game are shifting it from like the inside out, the inside out. Like we're essentially like Trojan horsing it. Like we're coming in, we're shifting the projection of the game. And with that, the illusion is going to dissolve and stuff. And because their illusion, it's all, oh man, do you have any fault? Did I make sense? Did yeah, it totally made sense. It reminds me of the analogy of Plato's cave. There are these illusions that are keeping the... I perceive it as a firmament, but I don't necessarily like it. It's just, I see it the same way as you do. There's a dome. There's a barrier that has prevented us from being able to move freely across this barrier. Where I'm at is I don't think we we're ever meant to reincarnate. And, but we reincarnate because this dome is there. And we reincarnate because like part of whatever the hijacking is seems to me that there are beings that decided that they were going to go off on an extreme experiment of free will where they're just like totally fuck you god i'm doing it my way i get to be god in my own right and but they then cut themselves off from the god being the totality like the source of energy and creation and consciousness and love and everything so they had to cut themselves off from that in order to be independent and maintain a sense of separation and so then they also aren't resourced 
So they have to siphon the light off of other beings. And so that's why they have hijacked this place because we are, and maybe other places too, for all I know, but they keep us in the firmament reincarnating because they keep siphoning off of us. And so when we can't get out, it's because they don't let us get out so they can keep using us as a energy source. And then I think that the real bummer about reincarnation and the karmic wheel in the past, whenever we weren't here as creator beings, when we weren't here and there were just the souls that I feel like to be a creator being, what it means is we came in from outside of the firmament and to come and do our best to retain our memories and then remember how to do this and change it from the inside out and dissolve the firmament or whatever barrier it is. And that, so for the beings that have been reincarnating here over and over, I think like very much like MK Ultra, their psyches just get fragmented more and more with every single lifetime until they're just like like dust, like just a waste of their the psyche of that soul can never retrieve its soul fragments to become whole again within the existing false matrix construct within their game because it's not it's almost like their game leads to a whole bunch of entropy. And like when we see, for example, like our garbage dumps, like our literal dumps that are just full of all of that stuff, it doesn't matter if it's plastic or aluminum or steel or whatever material it is made of. It was all organic material, but it got separated from its natural organic placement within this environment and compartmentalize so that I'm sure that probably in many tens of thousands of years, all of it will finally break down and be re-assimilated into this environment. But that it's, I feel like consciousness is trapped in our inanimate objects as well. And so that's what I think they're doing with our game. And the, what I was saying with Plato's cave, it's almost like we came in, the conscious creator beings came in to be like, wait a minute, these are in shadows. <laughs> and just to remember and figure out how to, not that we can get out of the cave instantly because we remember that it's shadows, but we can remember how to dance with the shadows so that we're not like, oh my God, these are shadows and we're all going to die. Or, you know what I mean? I don't know. Oh, yeah. that. Remember, I, that made me remember one, I walked through one morning because I was like, I woke up in the middle of the night and had that dream where I was like, the biggest illusion, Amy, is that this is a trap. I was like, there is no trap. Yeah. The biggest illusion that they have created for us is that we are trapped here. And then once you realize like you're not trapped, like it's, you get at any point, but you have to be aware of, you have to know how the game works and you have to know, be aware of what's happening in order to realize like there is no trap. And so that's what, like you were talking about the old like MK Ultra fracturing of the the mind. Like that is like when you think of it, like the macro to the micro. Like that is likely what is happening at a huge scale because that's what's happening. Like that we're seeing in our like everyday life with people. Like even the news stories that like just keep coming out that are like obviously the mainstream media news stories, but it's like you you're watching. I feel like I'm watching people in real life, like their, their minds are getting fractured because they're getting so inundated with so much information. And it's like, they can't even put everything together anymore. Like their mind has gone so many different ways. So it's like, they're so confused, but then that's also happening in, in the truth or community. And like this, mm. because we're getting so many different things. So when we hear something, we're literally like, our mind is so fractured. We're trying to go back to all the different things, all the things we've consumed and bring it back together to make it make sense. And if there's no way to make it make sense, then that is how you fracture someone's mind. Like it, and there's so many different directions that can go in. And that's one of the things that like, we're working so hard together to do is to like completely reprogram our, our minds, but also clear it all out and then change. So I think the third eye is like the key to the projection. Mm -hmm. I think that as our heart space lights up the projection, the third eye is going to see like the light up of the heart face. 
And then it's going to, as it looks down through your heart space, it's going to then project out to the world. So I do, and I know you've said this so much. I think the key to this is truly to live every moment through your heart. Do not even like sometimes when you feel yourself overthinking things, just like blank, be like, nope, I don't want any of that. What feels right? Like it's like really learning about like your energy body, like that's talking to you all the time and like really. But it's like right now we're all so caught up in our heads and yes, because we're all fractured, like on it's happening, the macro to micro, it's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. Also, even as I was noticing, even as I was telling you about what I think this is, and I was like, like my mind though was going all these different directions. So I'm like, then there, it also could be this. It also could be this. It also could be this. Because right when you start to like feel into what it is, your mind has so has heard and like seen and felt so many different things. Not even trusting what like your heart and like gut is telling you. Totally. And just the heart portal alone. Like I, yeah, I think the heart portal is the key. It's the key to all this. And P.S. Everybody, like this is not an original idea for me. This is I learned this through Drew Velo Melchizedek, who wrote a book. He's most widely known for the Flower of Life books. But if you all pay attention to me, you know how I feel about the Flower of Life. Fuck that shit. But he also wrote a book after that called Living in the Heart or Living from the Heart. It's a very short read. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm sure you can find it on Amazon or whatever. But I read it in 2016 when I was dealing with the grief of losing Killian. And it completely, it just resonated so much and it really stuck with me. And I realized that's it. Like I've learned so many things through that was the activation piece to direct our consciousness down to the heart. And then so much more has come through to me from that point. But basically, we're all super programmed to be in our brains. This is why I'm forever creating or complaining about calendars and all that stuff, because even though there are practical necessities to like you and I agreeing on this time right now to meet up, there are practical necessities. We're really over-focused on it in our, so that it keeps us in a very mental space, compartmentalizing time, compartmentalizing like tasks, like everything is segmented off and fragmented off. And it keeps us out of the heart and we're trained from the beginning to be in our mind chiefly and bringing our consciousness down into the heart is where it just feels to me like all of that anxiety just goes away and but it's hard to do it I'm getting better at it all the time but I've been practicing it for this entire year I can't honestly say it's been every day but most days I've been practicing doing it at least even for a couple minutes and so it's getting easier and easier But I still am not predominantly living from my heart. I have to consciously remind myself to be in that space. But the I agree with you. The third eye is the key to this projection. It's like the projection screen where this where we project the image out onto the green screen. But if it's not connected to our heart, then we're just projecting from our Instagram vision board or our literal Pinterest vision board that we've created or from what we're getting in the news, be it truth or news or mainstream news or through our media, like in the absence of the heart is the discernment tool. The heart is the place where you know if something resonates with you as true or not. And so if we're just always directed away from the heart, then we basically they have a lot of control over our the reality we are creating through that projection mechanism. Well, people are asked, like, well, how do I know how to live through the heart? What's the heart saying? Like the heart talks to for me, I'm realizing the heart talks a lot to me through my gut and but especially through my energy body like when people talk about like those tingles that they get or like that when something's resonating as truth and all to me that's like your heart lighting up like your heart space like really lighting up telling you like yes this is this is truth this is truth stop you know how like when you repeat something that like is coming through like yeah it's come through your eyes and it's going through your mind you'll say you'll repeat it back to someone and you're like your energy body doesn't ever react you're just repeating a program thing that like you've been told but when it's actually something that like is resonating for you like your energy body will tell you it will even like for me sometimes it'll show up like with skin stuff or it will just it there's a way 
there's practices and ways to like your heart is telling you but it's just those feelings that you get like when you talked about whole the whole living through your heart space i also think that's the way that like as i practice it, this is the way that like you can literally be around and do anything and not be triggered by people say oh you have to do your shadow work you have to work through your triggers blah blah we're going to get triggered. There's going to be things that are like, you're going to be like, I do not agree with that. But once you're like living through your heart space, I'll say, or once like you've gained enough perspective and gone through a lot of like different checkpoints that people have, people are at, you, you gain this perspective and you understand where they're coming from. And I honestly think as you move through the different checkpoints and like start to flip, follow the coins more, like more and more of like your heart space does get activated because you start to see yourself so much in other people. And as you start mm. to self-love and like everything, you love them for where they are. And like, you're like, it's okay. Like you, the triggers are gone. Like you can sit with people who have wronged you. You can do things like, because you no longer have that like chip on your shoulder because you, you a or can feel into like that they, you can see and feel that like right now their mind is like way more fractured than yours or they're trying to, piece things together and I think that's a really big piece that like we all need to in order to shift this projection we all just need to start really being kinder with each other and realize that we just got to show up for even people who you would never ever show up for just like it just show up for them Kanji. but yeah no totally because it's ultimately what I was thinking when you were talking about all that was like So much of the way a person presents themselves is an identity. It's like through the lens of an identity that they constructed in order to maintain that fragmentation because of traumas that they experienced, whether it's a micro trauma or like a mid-level trauma or a macro trauma, doesn't matter. We've all experienced them. Often it happens in like childhood or formative years and we build up this identity around it to protect it like a shell. And so when we're engaging with people who are being assholes or just like it's at face value, it's hard to find compassion for them because you're just like, why do you have to be so antagonistic or why do you have to be so negative or why do you have to be gossipy or judgmental or whatever the thing is, right? It's I think when you're operating from your heart, you can feel the you don't have to know it through your mind. Although for me, I'm claircognizant, so I do know it through my mind. But I think even if that's not how somebody operates. In the heart, you feel them and you feel like, oh, they're just like, there's a part of themselves that they're not ready to see. And it's big and it takes up 90% of their energy to maintain a shell around that. So they don't have to look at it because they don't know how they're going to handle it. They, they have no idea. They think that if they have to look at that part, of themselves that live through that thing, they're going to die. The pain is going to be so overwhelming that they're going to die. And that's why ego death is so fucking painful because it's the crumbling of that, that fake shell that we create. And then that thing gets exposed. So it's like a version of yourself that you thought that you were dies. And then you're like, oh, and this thing happened. That's what it was all about. It's just so intense. Yeah, and it's also like when you're sitting with them, that person's so angry. Like even if they're trying to think of a good example, but um, once you sit with them, I honestly think also one of the things like as you activate more and more your heart space, it comes with like you then can transmute, become like the portal or the stargate, like essentially to send to transmute that energy into something good. So it's like you're that person who a lot of people just get angry back or triggered. So it's like when you're actually with someone and seeing that like living museum of like when someone's really mad at you for something that like does not matter or it's their own personal pain that they're going through. And if you can just sit with them and be like, hey, or not even react and like even just take a little bit of that and not just throw it back in their face. Like we're so used to like as humans interact with each other, like we take each other's energy and then we also will save it or we'll throw it back in their face where it's like there's. It's like all those conflicts words, but then once you do become aligned with like your heart space, like I do think that aligns with source. I think that it's like you're able to have a direct connection where it's like you can take some of that anger and you can send it back to source. Source can bring it, send it back like with, and I think that's one of the ways that the vibration here is changing is a lot of us who are able to interact through our heart space, take some of that like lower vibration and transmute it. Then it's like that, like a 
flow and it's like small, but if all of us are doing that with each other, like we really can shift the energy of this place, the vibrations of this place. Yeah, it totally. It reminds me of when I used to be a room attendant at a resort and they would often on the weekends host either hockey tournaments or like for boys or girls dance, whatever, not dance recitals, but like dance competitions. Oh my God. And on turnover day, you go and unlock the door and open the door for a room that you had to clean like for a new guest. And it would just be an explosion of like pizza boxes, pizza mashed into the floors, like sometimes puke in the bed sheets, glitter everywhere. And you're just like, it just feels so overwhelming. You just want to cry. But I would just always be like, I just got to start somewhere. And like you said, like, it seems like you're doing a small amount, but eventually I would get through all those rooms. Like eventually the mess is cleaned up. And I feel like the benefit too, like that's really what we're doing when we're able to sit with somebody in our heart space and just understand. I love the way you put it earlier in the conversations, like they're just still in the trance. That's all. They're just in the trance. And at a certain level, none of us is real. We're all characters in the dream of the great dreaming mind. Like I, no matter what sort of like belief paths I go through, That is something that stays really constant as true for me. And nobody else has to take it on, of course, but it feels true. This isn't on the other side of this. The dream ends and none of us existed as individuals. We're all actually one collective being that is experiencing this thing. And when we sit with each other and we understand that that this person that is hard to hold space for is just still in the trance and that like even six months ago I was way more in the trance than I am now like I'm not a hundred percent out of the trance and I'm not going to claim that it's like I'm ever waking up within the trance and so why would I then judge somebody who's at a certain point in their process of waking up in the trance or if even if it seems like they're not waking up in the trance there's no, the more I can just sit with them and help, as you said, take on a little bit of that energy and pass it through the portal of my being, through the portal of my heart, and not just throw it back at them and compound it with my own trance based shit, then I'm actually helping to clean up the situation rather than exponentially compound the mess that's here. Yeah. And this is a really big hotel. There's a lot of rooms, a lot of rooms to clean up. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Apparently billions of rooms. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we are like these vessels that just need to, we're just, I don't know. It's just so crazy when you think about it this way. Also, I think like you asked earlier about like, how are we in their matrix? I honestly think this is one of the simplest, easiest ways. If you want to detach from their matrix to literally start listening to other people and start like helping transmute some of that stuff, like just... And it doesn't even have to be like, you don't have to do a session. You don't have to do anything. Can literally be like the checkout person at the grocery stand. It literally can be just like someone who is having a bad day. You sit and li- it's like you're, if you can sense that. And if you could even just shape, make their day that much better. Like those are the little tiny baby steps we can like do every day to just make this like place better. Shit to get us out of this illusion. That yeah. Like, because this is that's also such an illusion that this is like hell and this is purgatory no it's not like this is the, if it, and if it is it's by our own creation it's by our own creation but i personally perceive that we are like again i feel like it comes from programming like i i perceive that this realm like where we have bodies and our bodies are the adapted suit to be able to incarnate here and be causal agents. And these bodies need to be able to experience pain because it's an important thing so that we have data. Like if our body is being damaged, like there has to be a pain response to indicate to us as quickly as possible that damage is occurring and that repairs need to be made. But the, I believe that the hijackers of this realm they figured out that, oh, and not that they have to do this anymore, but for a certain period, like in the, I do believe that the, what's it called? 
the dark ages, like the medieval period w- was real. And then pe- people lived through it because I remember being there and I've seen other people there. I think that during that period, they were like, let's fuck up their root chakras. Let's like, let's just completely take over this place by drilling so much pain and starvation and discomfort and like body visceral level trauma into the experience that there is this for they don't have to keep that up forever because we just carry it around as a collective like memory that we hold in our collective akasha that the body and we're still watching it the body isn't safe i want out of my body i this is a prison my my body's too heavy my body's too dense my body's too fat i can't eat meat i can't or all the th- all the different ways that we experience our bodies as being like pain spaces or working against us. I think that w- we create, we now perpetuate a hell realm on that. I think the chakras are all like, I don't know, octaves on the piano. So on that octave, we create a hell realm and it's of our own creation now, but it was seeded into us. And, but we just didn't have the level of consciousness to recognize that. So we just continue to perpetuate it. Yeah, I think that you were very spot on with that. And that a lot of the things that happened to us, like, honestly, it goes back to that whole Lemuria. Whenever people talk about Lemuria, I really think that was the last time that like we were operating off the original blueprint. And that's why I think a lot of people are connected to the Lemurian time because there's a lot of people who are coming back to re- restore the original blueprint of this realm or whatever you want to call it. And But since Lemuria, do you believe that's when it started? And that's when like we are, we've been attacked nonstop yeah, through these bodies and through experiences and through different time periods and through different, especially with wars and not like, it's and like with so like all the trauma that happens to us and i 100 percent, it's like it's happening from like our sacred like anything that grounds us into this earth has been mm-hmm. like, like so that like we do not so we have these feelings of we're so disconnected it's it's just this feeling of being like been really attacking the areas that connect us and make us remember and like you know connect us to like this gaia or the realm whatever you want to call it are what like to involve into like disconnect us so that we forget so that they've been able to put us in these trances because think about how hard it is when you remember it there is no one who wakes up who goes back in the trance there's no one who's you know what i realize what's going on but i am going to go like i'm right. like, asleep it's like that scene from the there is no cipher yeah, yeah. there's no whole <laughs> yeah so it's like they they know that once like the people start like realizing what's going on, they know that there's no like back. It's a literally the slingshot. Like you just keep going forward and forward until you essentially get to that point where you're like, where it's like it feels like you have reached the bottom and you feel like it's like what now? And you're like, oh gosh, since I realize now that I create this place, I need to now like work through all my stuff and start creating this place like a place that like I want to actually live in yeah and I think that makes me think of the concept of like personal responsibility because I don't know like even within myself even though I've worked through so much trauma and I also was very lucky to not inherit a whole ton of trauma like I've had my share but it's not nearly as heavy as some people have been exposed to but I even within myself, I feel a little kickback at the idea of like when you say working through all my shit, there's this little part of us that's but like I didn't, for example, if somebody was born into a lot of childhood trauma, it's it's not fucking fair. This sucks and I'm not responsible for this. Or I think Abraham Hicks, it was one of the things that she has never been able to clarify within her her talking when she talks about like how you created this and So there's a little piece that's, I didn't fucking create this. If you really went through a lot of hell, like there is a part of us that naturally is, I didn't create this. But what I perceive it to be is not so much that we created this. Like we did, but we were used, like we were fed things to create. And that it's a gigantic tangled mess where you can never, we still don't even, you and I talk about it all the time and we can't actually even pinpoint who the they are. Like we get close, but even then I think you can't fully see it. Like you can never see it. So there's, 
So then to come back to personal responsibility, it's like, it's not like responsibility to work through all your shit. Like you somehow incurred all this shit by your own deficits, but it's more like responsibility as in nobody else can actually do it. This is yours. It's your, even if you were born into it and it fucking blows and it's not fair, nobody else can actually clear any of that out, but it's been bestowed to you to steward. So you have to clear it out. (laughs) that you can create freely it's like the whole thing where it goes back to how like we all create our own it's all similar energies and like we're creating our own like universes realities and like projecting those forwards to create like this new projection it's like the same goes for that like where they air quotes whoever they are knew that it's as long as they not like we're all connected i do think we're all connected and invisible like network and that's probably all being connected to the source but it's like you can just like individually all the different personal realities like what they're going through are going to it's like they knew that's like you know how when you're reverse engineering something it feels like that's what we're doing this is how they got us here they knew that yeah like, we seem to traumatize enough universes and enough realities and then like their the projection would change and then like everyone would start to get on board or it's like we knew how now this is the same way we have to get ourselves out of the mess yeah it's to do the opposite yeah like traumatizing people it's like those mazes on a kid menu those paper kids menus and like for whatever reason like if you get a really complicated one because most of us can do the kid ones whatever but let's just say it's an adult level maze but for some reason you can make your way through it in reverse better than you can make your way through it from like the entry point i don't know why but yeah it's totally like we're reverse engineering we're like oh i see i see how this works and i can just play it backwards and just yeah i'm really curious do you ever get memories or have you ever seen things in your readings about atlantis i have so atlantis the only memory or the only thing i've ever been able to one and i wonder if it is atlantis but it was me it was a very vivid dream. Like I dreamed very quickly. And I was going through room to room and it was a kind of recurring dream. And then helping people like saying that I saw it like going like the water like levels were rising. And I was going from room to room telling everyone they're going to be safe and like, oh, like everything's going to be okay. And then I have had other experiences where I've done readings and I'm with the person when like they drowned. And I'm like, okay. So then all of a sudden this was happening enough where I realized like it's not even necessarily me, but in these like visions, I'm the water, like the consciousness of the water that's like as the water ri- levels rising, like with these people, the reason I can see them in all these different rooms is because like I'm the actual water that's like rising up, like engulfing them. And then like, the people who are drowning, I'm like the reason why I see them like when they're drowning a lot, like I've is because like it's essentially that I'm the water because I think the water is such a big part of all of us so I think like when we really tap in that's the only thing that I've ever wondered was this building that I see over and over again where like the water levels are rising and I'm like I wonder if that was Atlantis but other than that no and when I tap into Atlantis I think it's so there's so many stories around it and so like our psyche is so fractured so it's like, I don't even know what is mine and what is someone else's. And that's when I get where I really don't trust myself. And because like with the galactics, we talked about this on the last thing. Like I will not read anything about like galactics. I won't read anything about different type of species. I'll just have conversations with like people. And with the Atlantis, I just think there's too much in my psyche going around. Where it's like I could, couldn't even tap into it if I wanted to. Yeah, that's so interesting. I remember the first time that, I saw Atlantis in a reading and it was very clear. Like it's the first memory I have of seeing Atlantis. Um, It was somebody who was wanting to write a book about Atlantis and she knew she had been there and like it was our second reading. So I had seen her there before and she just wanted me to keep going into Atlantis and pull out information almost like she was using me to do research for her book. And so I could see like the architecture. It was the nature of her questions. I could see so much. I could hear the language. It's impossible for me to describe or articulate. But I always seem to see Atlantis at its height. I never see the destruction. I know how the destruction, not like I know because I've read about it from other people. Like I I also have heard a lot of the Atlantis stuff that goes around, but it's more like I know 
what happened, but I never see it. Or maybe somebody's never come to me with a question who lived through it. I don't know. It's really hard to describe. It's almost like I also don't see people's deaths a lot of the time, like the moment of their death. I also don't see the moment of my death a lot of the times. So I know how the death happened, but I don't need to like see it again or move through it again. The death is so interesting because I see that all the time and I'm so drawn to being a death doula. I think yeah. I'm one of that. So I definitely think it's too like with me, it's very like there's something with death that's connected because I like, I'm also one of those people where I've never, even ever since I was a kid, death hasn't been something that really scared me. Like it's not, it's, it's very natural. It's very easy for me to see. So that makes sense that I've actually, if I, if that is what it was that I've seen like the destruction and everyone dying and stuff. Because I do think that there are, I think that if you let it happen, but like you die within the right circumstances, there are people who are going to help you. There are energies that are going to help you like move and shift to the other, to whatever it is. But I also like, I don't know what's after this. That's where I'm, that's where I have a really hard time struggling is what happens after this. And so that's where I know that like where my ceiling is, I guess. Like mm -hmm. I, I get a good idea of what's outside here and but the actual, and, but yeah, the actual what happens after this, I, like I'm not, I'll say I'm not like a medium. Like people have like, I've done mediumship work and, and it's always like a flu, but it's like, I'm not necessarily, I'm not your good, like I'm not a go-to medium, but there's some really good mediums who are out there who like can say like, they are become aware of what actually happens after death. I'm the same. I'm not a medium. So whenever I do it, it's more like a fluke. It's not that I'm unable to communicate with people whose bodies have died, but it's more, that's not my forte and I can't guarantee it. So I won't like ever sell myself as such because you might come sit with me and I can't get anything. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happens after this either. I feel like for, I feel like I guess I do. I think that a lot of us get pulled into a false light and then recycled. And then some of us who aren't, who didn't get snagged on that karmic wheel, I think we just pass through the firmament. We just pass right back through and but the thing I don't know about the other side that kind of stumps me is are we on a ship what is the reality <laughs> on this one like Let that I know I still up. don't have the answer for what these ships are I still there's so That's much what I'm, like saying like you can say oh you go back to source I'm like I don't even know we just get unplugged or this is that's where it's like I can't even someone came and asked me like directly what happened like afterwards and stuff and it was one of those things where I was like I feel like there's so I feel like it also against when you're getting a message and you feel like there's a little bit of interference I always feel like there's interference yeah we try to perceive what comes after this they right. want to believe that it's like we go to heaven or, or we go into a long sleep and stuff like that but when you actually when I try personally to tap into it it's like I, it feels like it's like a strobe light of all these different things of what it could be. And it's like that to me is interfering where they're like, I'm like, right. I'm supposed to know right now. Yeah, totally. Exactly. The that they are keeping from us. We are not supposed to be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like our, we were having a conversation privately about handlers. <laughs> like, like our handler from the outside is nope, nope, shut it down. Yeah. Okay. He's asking around that question. Shut it down. Oh my God, it's so funny. Sweaty. <laughs> yeah, we're like, we're sovereign beings and we're like, but we do have that Audi, that handler Audi. So yeah, sovereign. <laughs> I feel like we should wrap up the show and it depends. How much time do you have? Do you have 15 minutes? Oh yeah. Yep. Do you want to do a Patreon bonus episode where we talk about whatever you were saying, like the somatics? And like the energetics and somatics of the galactics. So meaning, I think you were talking about like alluding to shifting into those galactic states because I've been getting some information about that too. So I'd love to compare. Okay. Okay. Regular audience listeners, this is where we part. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Colleen, for coming and talking to the podcast at large. Can you tell everybody again, like where to find you, what you're offering, if anything, at the moment? And 
the things. Thank you so much for listening. For anyone who took the time to listen, my handle on Instagram is celestial time, celestial underscore timing. And same for, but if you want to contact me like through that, it's that on Instagram or Facebook. And yeah, and if you're interested in anything, I can send you my offerings and yeah, or if you just want to chat or if you have any questions following this conversation, I'm always available to answer questions. And Colleen's one of those mysterious unicorns that like, she just doesn't, she doesn't do the whole website thing and all that. She just, I just don't need to do that. And <laughs> she's got secret offerings. So you have to, you just have to reach out when it feels aligned and find out what she's got going on. Yeah. And yes. And it's also one of those things with it's, I was not whatever this, I'm just not a good electronic person. So it's more, I'm like an old woman <laughs> body that I'm like, I just don't know how to do this stuff. So anyway, so it's very old fashioned. I'm the person like, if you want to give me a call, let's just have a chat. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you for being here. And thank you, beautiful listeners. I love you. Have a beautiful day or night wherever you are. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Or you can come join the Patreon at $5.55 a month and listen to the rest of the conversation with Colleen. That's an option too. Love you so much. Bye. Well, that's a wrap. I truly hope that you enjoyed the episode and that you got some good activations, insights, and inspirations from what was shared today. I want to remind you that you can review the show on Apple Podcasts for a chance to win a free 45-minute Akashic Records reading with me to be shared on the show. Just remember to screenshot your review before you submit it and send it via email to amy at the northstarguidance.com to be entered into the monthly draw. I want to thank my Patreon members from the bottom of my heart for supporting this show. You guys, you cannot possibly know what your support means to me. Seriously, if everything else in my business had to be shut down, the podcast is the thing that I want to keep going and your support means that it can keep going. <laughs> On Patreon, I share bonus conversations, gifts from my guests, weekly dope-ass energy reports, quarterly group hug calls, and more. To become a supporter, use the link in the show notes and head on over to my Patreon. And I want to give a shout out to May, who edits all of these podcasts, as well as the Goddess Support team for all that they do to keep this operation running smoothly. Finally, I want to thank you, beautiful listener, for the valuable currency of your time and attention. I do not take it for granted. You are a powerful creator, and may everything in this podcast serve you in your highest creations. Your listenership means the world to me truly, truly. Without you, I would just be talking to myself. So my beloved listener, have a beautiful day or night wherever you are, and I will catch you on the next episode.